Air algae is pretty common in the planted tank. Even though it can be a nuisance, it's not bad for our fish. There are a couple of algae eaters that nibble on hair algae, but no one will be able to wipe out a full infestation. In a breeding tank, hair algae actually provides excellent hiding spots for juvenile fish or microscopic critters that serve as good food for fry or micro predator fish like dwarf grommies and threadfin rainbows. In today's video, I'll show you how to identify hair algae, determine where it's coming from, show you how to get rid of it, and keep it from coming back. Hair algae is pretty easy to identify. It can vary a bit in color and length, but it's always fibrous. Some types of hair algae branch out from one stalk, while others only form one branch. They can get really long and show up as a single strand, or grow in little tufts and patches to create thick mats. As with other types of algae, whether or not you use CO2 will influence how you diagnose the source of your hair algae. In either case, low flow is a large contributor. And like every other type of algae, poor plant growth can really promote hair algae infestations. For tanks without CO2, high lighting is the most common source. For tanks with CO2, it's often the case that lights are cranked all the way up and CO2 levels are low. The first step with any algae outbreak is to physically remove as much of it as possible. Fortunately, hair algae is easy to grasp and rip off by hand. It doesn't cling to surfaces like Blackbeard. No matter how diligently you remove hair algae by hand, there will always be a few chunks remaining. And these, of course, have the potential to grow large again. In order to almost completely wipe it out from the aquarium, you can pull out hardscape and plants to spray them down with a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. That's a pretty typical concentration when you buy it from the supermarket. Simply put it in a spray bottle and spray down objects. Let them sit for 15 minutes before rinsing off hydrogen peroxide. I like to stick plants in buckets with lids for the 15 minute period so that they don't dry out. For hardscape, you can let them sit as long as you want, but for live plants, be careful not to exceed that 15 minute window. It's a good idea to scrub rocks and wood down at this point to knock off any chunks of algae that you missed when pulling by hand. After waiting a couple days, I can see that most of the hair algae is dead. It's turning kind of a pale, whitish color, but sometimes it'll turn red when it dies. There might be a few little living sprigs left, but for the most part, mission accomplished. It's best to pull out all remaining bits of hair algae. And for those that you can't completely pull out, spot target with Seachem XL or other liquid carbon. Okay, so you've done all this hard work to get rid of your hair algae. Now it's time to take some steps to prevent it from coming back. For CO2 and no CO2 tanks alike, Keeping your plants healthy is one of the best ways to stave off hair algae. In order to ensure that your filters are putting out a good turnover rate, make sure to give them a good clean out. If you're running a no CO2 tank, make sure not to blast your light too strongly and keep it on for 8 hours a day. Whether it's built in or you have to buy one, keeping your lights on an automatic timer is super convenient. It's so hard to be consistent about manually turning lights off and on at the same time every day. And it's easy to forget to turn them off at night if you've had a long day or a few beers. Although it sounds counterproductive to use fertilizers to get rid of algae, a lean fertilization regimen can really help keep your plants healthy. And healthy plants do a good job at repelling algae from growing on them. If you're running a CO2 tank, make sure to keep your levels at 30 parts per million. You can also get away with using stronger light and fertilizing a little more if you use CO2. That's because CO2 unlocks a higher potential in plants to consume more nutrients and light, making them grow faster and healthier. And healthy plants are the best way to keep algae in general at bay. Last but not least, a strong algae crew can help prevent hair algae outbreaks from ever occurring. They do this by eating biofilm, an organic layer in our aquarium that attracts algae. They also eat algae as it's starting to grow when it's most palatable. Even though a mono shrimp and autosynclus will graze on small amounts of young hair algae, they will not eat mass quantities of it. That's it for hair algae. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you found today's content helpful. I'll see you in the next one.